All right. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry about the glare back here. Um, I'm new laptop and everything's new layout. I'm trying to figure out how to turn dark mode on on uh, Chrome, and I forget how to, so bear with me. Apologies for the glare, though. Uh, I find it to be extremely annoying. I'm sure you probably will as well, but either or, I digress. Um, welcome back to another episode of The Ground Floor. Today we're going to be doing the top 10 TV shows uh, of my liking. Um, <clears throat> and if my top 10 doesn't match your top 10, in the comments, put your top 10. Let me know. If you're listening to this on uh, podcast format, send me a message. Go to Anchor um, and look up uh, Hotel Nerd. Matter of fact, I will give you that website right now. Just go to anchor.fm backslash hotel nerd and you can send me a message. Uh, you can send me a voice message and you can do donations and the whole nine uh, right there on Anchor. So if my top 10 doesn't match your top 10, let me know. Send reviews. Let, let's have a conversation. Let's because I would like to do one of these live one of these days. But I need people to be watching for me to do these live. I would love to do them live. I want to speak with you. But uh, until I get a base, I'm going to just keep doing pre records because it's uh, a waste of time to do live and just speak into the nothingness. <clears throat> so, and with that being said, another way you can help us out is uh, check out Pod Decks at the website down below uh, just go to look up pod decks on google do some shopping and uh use redeem code uh nerd 21 and you get 10 percent off of any physical merchandise that you order and uh you help the channel out as well because whatever they sell we get a piece of and we want to make this channel better and we want to make it stronger so changes are coming i just don't know when yet but when they are we will definitely be making announcements and one of the best ways you can help make changes happen is to support the channel either by doing donations through anchor you can do donations through stream uh labs just go to hotel hotel and send in questions with donations it helps. Trust me, it helps. Uh, so with that said, we will get this show on the road. And this is going to be a quick one because I'm doing this extremely late at night and I have to be up early in the morning for my daughter. So let's just get right to it. Number 10 is the X-Files. If you grew up in the 90s, there are two shows. Well, three shows that you heard of like religiously x files power rangers and the simpsons those are the three shows that you heard of in the 90s and this is the one show that decided to call it quits uh in, in a decent time uh the last Two seasons from what I can remember. It's been so long since I watched the X-Files. The last two seasons have worked that great. Um, the reboot, or I guess continuation, wasn't that great that they tried to do about five or six years ago. God, it's been that long. I forgot it's been that long. It just seems like it was yesterday that they tried to do this. <clears throat> but uh, this one will actually probably pop up in another episode where I do... TV shows that overstayed their welcome. I believe that X Files is uh, one of the shows that overstayed their welcome. If it's not in the top ten, it'll definitely be an honorable mention. Um, it it should have went out sooner than it did. So, <clears throat> and that's why it's number ten on this list. Oh, so it would be higher. I mean, the X Files was basically the '90s version of Supernatural. And when you get down to it, 
number nine. Currently running Chicago PD, part of the Chicago family. Uh, you will see Chicago shows pop up quite often uh, on my list while I'm talking about TV. I'm not so partial on Chicago Med, but I do like Chicago PD and Chicago Fire. Uh, Chicago Fire was the one that started everything, and Chicago PD was spun off of that. And then Chicago Med spun off both Fire and PD. And then there was a fourth show that lasted for not even a season. It was called Chicago Law. And it didn't do very well. It was the driest of dry shows that was out there. And they didn't even give it a full season, if I remember correctly. And it went yoink. So, uh, so we got the Chicago Trilogy, PD, Fire, Med. And like I said, it's still ongoing. And if you're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, up until about uh, might be three seasons now, uh, Casey Jones was featured prominently on this show from the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. He um, he played uh, Solinsky, I believe was his name. Can't think of his first name right now. But he played uh, Hank Voigt's uh, best friend in the show until they went and uh, wrote him off. I'm not going to say how because I'm not going to do spoilers because the show is too damn good to get spoiled. And on to number eight. The West Wing. <coughs> not to be political, but... This was a, my, it's a political show. So, I mean, kind of do get political when talking about the West Wing. But with this show in particular, the cast was amazing. You had Martin Sheen, Rob Lowe. Um, yeah. Uh, John Spencer, rest in peace. John Spencer was absolutely amazing. This is actually John Spencer's last show. Um, trying to remember who plays Sam because I really like him as an actor and I can't think of who he is right now. Huh. Can't think of his name. Just saved my damn life. And uh, even though people I can't remember uh, their names of right now because I'm kind of half in a stupor because I'm tired this this cast is just nuts. So you look this cast up. Uh, just Google. Google this cast. This cast is amazing. This cast is worth watching. This cast is a powerhouse. And it made for some great TV. Some very funny moments, too. Some very powerful moments as well. But, uh, yeah. Give this one a go. I mean, put your politics to the side. Just watch it. Enjoy it. It was a good bit of TV. I missed it when it was on. I watched it when it was on Netflix. It's on HBO Max now, by the way, if you're interested in watching it. So, give it a go. It, it's a good one. It's a really good binge, too, by the way. Uh, it was binge-worthy before binging was a thing. And this was a late 90s, early 2000s show, just as a point of reference. The Walking Dead at number seven. <sighs> Say what you will, The Walking Dead's had its ups and downs. Right now it's in a down because we have the extra episodes um, that people aren't quite a fan of. But you got to remember, they're doing these extra episodes and they don't have to. They're just extra tacked on episodes with their unique to the show. Uh, and if this proves anything, for anybody that says that we should continue doing Walking Dead after Commonwealth, um, this here, if you do not like these episodes, this here proves that The Walking Dead will not do well with TV-exclusive storylines, like for the actual main storyline. I mean, I know they've had um, individual storylines that 
have been like second or third tier storylines that are exclusive to the TV series, but uh, to actually have the whole narrative exclusive to the TV series is not going to work. Um, and these episodes prove that it's not going to work if you do not like these episodes. So, but hey, pandemic's given us the opportunity to have a Here's Negan episode. That one will not be unique to the TV show. That one, if you're familiar with the comics, we have a comic for that. The comic is absolutely fucking amazing. And that episode, I am so looking forward to it. And I, from my understanding, it is the finale episode of these uh, additional episodes that they're giving us. So <clears throat> next one uh, is for anime lovers. If you're not an anime lover, you probably you may have heard of this uh, show because it's in the top three of the current generation of anime right now. And that is My Hero Academia. We are five seasons in. Or no, we're going into the fifth season. Four seasons in. And fourth, the fourth season ended on a super, super high note. Um and left a lot of questions to be answered in the fifth season. So this will be very interesting to see how this works out. Uh, if you're a fan of the show and you've read the books, you know what's coming next. And even so, what's nice about this show is even though you know what's coming next, it gets presented to you like beat for beat. No. And okay, we're back. And so, uh, if you haven't watched this show and you're an anime fan, what are you doing? Get on it. Watch it. It's not that much uh, to watch right now. For four seasons in, probably got around 80 to 100 episodes to watch. It's worth it. It is very, very much well worth it. And it's on Funimation. So, uh, go ahead. Just, just go watch it. That's the only thing I can say. Number five is the second of the Chicago trilogy. Well, actually, it's the granddaddy of them all, uh, Chicago Fire. This show is so good, and you're you're so invested into these characters, probably more so than you ever would be with Chicago PD or Chicago Med, because you're you've been around with these guys since the start of the Chicago shows. This is show bleh, 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 bleh. Chicago franchise. Um but yeah, uh I would definitely say give this one a go. And uh just uh watch it. I mean I I, I wanna say more, but there's so much that happens in Chicago Fire that I don't want to spoil anything because there's so many twists and turns. The Chicago Fire, it's crazy how many twists and turns there are. But with that, we're halfway through the list, and we're going to take uh, about a 15 to 45 second break, and we will be back momentarily. And we're back. Uh, so <clears throat> now we've got through Chicago Fire. And we move on to number four. And that is 24. And depending on how 24 finishes out, because I have two, you might as well say I have a season left. Because season nine is only 12 episodes, and I think I'm on episode 12 of season eight. Uh, so I have a season left of 24. Depending on how 24 finishes out, will determine where this truly ends up landing on my list. Right now, it's at number four. It was at number three. And then so far, with what I've seen in season eight, I'm not quite sold on it. 
I think it may have should have ended at season seven. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll surprise me. But 24 is pretty good. Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, I'll be honest. I haven't really seen him in anything else other than Young Guns. Uh, I think he was in Flatliners. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think he was. Or was that Emilio Estevez? One of them was in Flatliners. I know Emilio Estevez was in Mission Impossible and the Mighty Ducks. But then Kiefer, I don't remember seeing him from Young Guns and anything until I seen him in 24. And like I said, I think Flatliners before that. And I know he was in Designated Survivor. So, but uh, most other people I don't know in this series. I know Zachary Quinto was in season one. Uh, oh, shit. Who played Milo? Um, damn it. I can't think of his name. Saved my life. He um, played, uh, I think his name was Hatchet in Haven on Sci-Fi. Stephen King adaptation of the uh, Cowboy Kid or Colorado Kid. <clears throat> So, I can't think of his name. I know his face. I can't think of his name. And he's in off and on throughout the series. Um, John Voight's in a, about half of a season. Uh, the guy that recruits Nicolas Cage and Gone in 60 Seconds there at the beginning of the movie. He's in for about a quarter of a season. Can't think of his name either. There's a, there's a lot of heavy hitter names in this franchise. Uh, they, they paid big bucks for some of these people, I'm sure. But yeah, 24, definitely one to watch. Uh, another anime title, Attack on Titan, currently in its final season. And the final season has been amazing. And sadly, uh, as it stands right now, they're doing 16 episodes, and unless they're doing a part two to the final season, which is season four, we probably aren't going to see the end of the manja arc, uh, which ends next month in the anime form, which kind of sucks ass. I'm going to be royally pissed because I've invested many, 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 many years of my time to the show. And if they shit on us, I'm going to be royally pissed. And this will definitely go off of my top 10. This will be a probably go from number three go to like 95 on my list of anime because I've seen at least over 140 anime uh, titles. Uh, this will probably be in the 90s if they shit the bed and they don't give us the ending that we deserve. <clears throat> at least let us know that you're going to continue. It's the only thing I ask. Let us know you're going to continue. And if it means that we get like a uh, 16 episode final arc of the final season then great then that means the final season is 32 episodes long <clears throat> but if you only give us 16 episodes and you end it at a really shitty spot then you, and you don't announce that we're going to continue no i'm no, no completely lose me <clears throat> number two ER. Uh, this was a, I believe it started in the mid 90s. This is where George Clooney really got going. Um, so if you want to see George Clooney before he was Batman, 
this is where it really kicked off for him. Uh, trying to remember, there's a lot of other names. Noah Weil is in this. Um, do, 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 do. What's her name? Uh, from NCIS New Orleans. She plays the, uh, the uh, medical examiner. Um, CC Pounder or CJ Pounder or something like that. Uh, she's in this, which actually kind of threw me back when I rewatched ER. Uh, first couple of seasons, and I saw her in there. It's like, oh, I didn't realize who you were before. Um, oh, God. There's a lot of heavy hitters that started here. Um, or shouldn't say started here as much as they got noticed here. And I'm blanking on the rest of them because, like I said, it's late. I'm tired. So, <clears throat> finally, for the ground floor, and actually this is probably going to be about the normal length episode now that I'm looking at it. I've tried to make it short, but sorry, guys. The ground floor. It's got to be MASH. I can watch MASH. I don't care what season it is. I can watch MASH and I can just sit down and I can just watch hours on hours on hours of MASH and just be thoroughly entertained with Alan Olda and the rest of the cast. The jokes are great. Uh, they take heavy material and they make it entertaining. Uh and that finale, oh my god, I've only seen it once, but that finale, whew, that sticks with you. Especially when he's flying away in a helicopter. Ooh. Chills just thinking about it. Great finale. Probably the best finale, actually, in uh, television history. I don't see anybody topping that anytime soon. And they sure as hell haven't topped it since. Um... But yeah, that that's the ground floor. Um, that's the top ten uh, TV shows that I've seen. So thank you for watching, and please join us next week when we do top ten worst television shows that I've ever seen. So with that, have yourself a good night, and we'll catch you next week.